Welcome to Eye on Aqua Bomb, the show that gives you an in-depth look at Aqua Ibom State, a state where its people are reputedly the first settlers in present-day Southeast Nigeria. Now, in today's episode, we take a look at the state's investment opportunities and, of course, the government's plans to industrialize the state. With a rich history involving a long struggle to separate itself from its much larger neighbor, Cross River State, Aquaibom is known today as one of the highest oil and gas producing states in the country. But unknown to most, the state is also considered as a safe haven for investment in the Gulf of Guinea. The state is home to a range of agricultural and mineral resources, with a large part of its population of 4 million dependent on the farming of food crops like cassava, yam, maize, rice and cash crops like palm oil and rubber. However, not unlike the rest of the country, its agricultural sector has been put on the back burner since the discovery of its oil wealth. But the tables have turned since the administration of Governor Godswill Akpabio assumed office five years ago. He has set in motion an ambitious plan to harness these resources and refocus his administration on the industrialization of Akwai Bomb. Uh, one of the areas I think we have achieved most is in opening up the state to the global community. Uh, for over 50 years, uh, my state was like a pedestrian state where people pass through to travel to big cities like Port Harcourt or go to places like Calabar. And so there was need for us to create a, a destination out of Aquaibon. My transformation agenda uh, is anchored on uh, people first. The idea was anything we must do in attempting to transform the state must start from the people, people oriented. For every contract we give, jobs are created. For every company we bring in, jobs are created. So I see thousands of our people working, for instance, with JB. I see thousands of our youth working with the Cetraco. Thousands of them are working with CCECC Construction Company. So for every single major contract that we give in the state, thousands of jobs are created along the line. We used to have a battery industry. We used to have a, a, a core steel industry. All those things have died. Of course, I will not know why almost 95% of the industry is in Nigeria had died before I became a governor. But my job now is to revitalize, revamp those things, and then attempt to create new, new ones, and then, of course, by implication, create job opportunities for our children. Governor Akpabio's first step was to develop the basic infrastructure that will support its transformation strategy in areas such as power with the completion of phase one of 685 megawatts of the Ibom power plant project, also the construction of an international airport and over 250 roads in the state, and also the aggressive overhaul of education and healthcare sectors and the restoration of security in the state and rural development. The focus is now on an ambitious industrialization plan that will diversify its economy. The administration of Governor Goswil Akwabio in Akwabio State, since he came on board as governor, looked at the, develop, the holistic development of Akwabio State from the point of view of providing the enabling and the basement infrastructure that will lead to the industrialization of the state. So now the next point is talking the true industrialization and what's the government strategy. First was to ensure that an investment corporation was put in place and that is there already. A new law was promulgated by the administration and signed into law by the government that the Aquarium Investment Corporation Law which all now provides the legal framework and backing that will allow on which the industrialization and true economic development of the state will ride on. The administration strategy is to ensure that government does at least one industrial concern in each of the 31 local government areas working with the private sector. And when I say industrial concern, logical industries looking at what's called localization of industry to allow for the nearness of raw materials and so on. All 31 local government areas of Okwaibo said have the peculiarities in terms of what's available, what investment would work. There are areas that produce a lot of fruits and so on. That's where fruit juice industries or factories would work more. There are areas that have very good arable land for rice production and so on. Somewhere up the north towards the economy axis, you, you can 
they invest in rice production and so on. And the state government has laid out the, an array of incentives that will allow private sector to work with government as long as the terms and conditions are met and then the industrial uh, potentials and development of the state would have uh, hit the ground. However, even its vibrant oil and gas sector is not enough to finance this project. In its 2012 budget, tagged the budget of industrialization, the state allocated 15 billion naira to support the current development going on. Last year, our budget was in excess of uh, 300 billion naira. That is probably one of the highest in the country for a state of less than 5 million people. On a per capita basis, that is substantial. And going forward, um, I'm not at liberty, for instance, to speak about the 2013 budget, but it's also an improvement on the last year's budget. Cumulatively, over the past um, five years, uh, government budgetary expenditure has been growing at about between 30 and 40 percent year on year. But this is not nearly enough to revise sectors like agriculture. The state has created several financing models, including the inclusion of its private sector, the floating of bonds, and making available funds from the Bank of Industry. Venture capital is very serious constraint here. And bank credit is expensive. Commercial bank credit, because lending at over 20% over to manufacturing is very, very expensive. So we go to the Bank of Industry, which is federal government funded development bank. And they have a matching fund system whereby if we put in 2.5 billion, the bank will match 2.5 billion. We then have 5 billion in the pool. We receive requests from entrepreneurs. We undertake appraisal and um, we make recommendations to the bank. Of course, the bank will have their own requirements for credit. But the beauty of it is that they lend at less than 10%. For our own impute, we don't charge, so the bank charge will then be much lower. And we are targeting about 5 to 7%. That's the system where we are now adopting. We work with the Bank of Industry, which is a federal government development bank. We, make, we recommend our entrepreneurs to the bank and they lend at single digit lending rate. Sweetening the deal for the private sector, Aquaibom has set the wheels in motion to provide the enabling environment that will boost the inflow of investment into the state and protect foreign businesses that are showing interest. These incentives focus on taxation, fiscal policies, the facilitation of the collection of permits and licenses, and the guarantee of land to build on. We have both uh, local and uh, national incentives. For instance, we provide land, which is fundamental because land is scarce. And uh, good land is even more scarce in, in the sense that land where there is water, electricity, internal roads, energy, and synergy. Like if you have an industrial layout or industrial estate, we delineate land and give out to entrepreneurs. Sometimes free, sometimes at a fee, the value of the land may be government equity, depending on what type of project that we are promoting. We also provide um, tax holidays, power near industries. These are governed by national um, industrial promotion code administered by the Nigerian Development Promotion Commission federally. But a lot of our incentives involve tax holiday and uh, nurturing, private sector nurturing at no cost to them, technical advice, management advice, and so on. A key project central to the industrial revolution of the state is the Ibom Industrial City, which will operate within a free trade zone occupying 12,000 hectares of land. The Ibom Industrial City, which will include an international stock, commodity and mercantile exchange, is expected to generate 100,000 jobs. This industrial city is also ideally placed for a deep seaport. 
positioned along Nigeria's deepest shoreline, the project offers 129 kilometers of investment-hungry shoreline. Other plants for the project include a 500-megawatt power plant, a fertilizer plant, 2,531 hectares allocated for urban development, and a heavy shipbuilding and repair facility. The bigger picture that the Kwabi administration is looking at right now, having achieved this, or one of the big, uh, the big pictures, so to speak, is the development of the Ibom Industrial City. The Ibom Industrial City is coming with a deep sea port. And I told you earlier about this depth, the sea draft of between 15 to 17 meters without dragging, unlike other inland ports that you have around here that cannot support ocean line as a bad thing by the shorelines. So with the development of that seaport coming uh, on board and with the Nigerian Ports Authority signing on to work with uh, the state government in developing that facility and with the uh, uh, export processing zone or uh, free trade zone license already granted by the federal government, you can see where we're going. So the governor wants to see through a 25-year development plan the full development of building of the boom industrial city, where you will have a deep sea port that Nigeria never had, where you will have a, a, an industrial village with fertilizer plants, ammonia plants, structured estates, industrial estates, medical uh, estates, uh, educational estates, and camps all in one place with beautiful roads, well paved roads, nice environment, and with a future rail development. That's why I said it's a 25 year plan. So right now, the government has finished all of the feasibility studies. Besides working with the National Port Authority and members of the private sector, Aqua Bomb State will partner with UK consultancy firm Worley Parsons, whose task is to supervise the delivery of the project. The administration of Governor Kwabio engaged uh, Wally Parsons, Mrs. Wally Parsons, international engineering consulting firms, to work on the designs with all of the other consultants and of course we are now on a road show through Wally Parsons look attracting investors and partners. Transports, agriculture, oil and gas and power just some of the key sectors that are open for investment in Akwe Bomb State. Now after the break we introduce you to the Akwe Bomb Investment Corporation an institution set up to coordinate the industrialization process so do stay with us.